Hello everyone, my name is Andrei Diakono. I am part of the developer experience team for the Microsoft Surface Duo. Today I am exploring what Flutter can do on foldable devices and what kind of magical experiences you can craft for your users. Everything you are about to learn today applies to all foldable devices. Most of the examples I show are Surface Duo examples, but everything works the same on all foldable devices out there. Throughout this talk, you might have questions. There is a Q&A section at the end, but until then, please use the chat as much as possible. I or someone from my team will always reply. Let's have a pleasant time and let's make this a uh, conversation. All right, you may have noticed that mobile devices gained extra flexibility. The main advantage for users is the larger screen, but there are some other interesting considerations. There are new use cases that take place on foldable and dual screen devices. The Surface Duo, for example, has two separate screens. Using two apps side by side comes naturally. Dragging content between apps becomes easy and users might expect that to happen with certain apps. The display is no longer one flat plane. It can bend and fold, resulting in different shapes that the device can take. One interesting consequence of this is the logical separation that happens inside your app. In this example, the top and bottom parts serve different purposes. The top part acts more like a monitor and the bottom part acts more like an input device. This is true for devices without a visible hinge as well. From this angle, the Galaxy Z Flip looks like a tiny laptop. Even if the screen is continuous, you can delight your users by doing something special with that posture. Look at what happens when I go from flat to half opened while watching a video on YouTube. My hope is that this talk helps someone in the audience create this sort of special experience. Let's see how these display features translate into code for us developers. First, I want to introduce a new term. The highlighted areas are called display features. These are areas of the display that your app needs to know about. These features sometimes prevent pixels from being visible or just curve the display. This is why you might not want to draw anything where the display features are on the screen. Your layout can avoid them or use them as a logical separator for your UI. So let's look at the Surface Duo again. Even though the device has two physical displays, your app sees one continuous screen. Judging by the size of it, your app might think it is rendering on a small tablet. Display features are pieces of data that come from Media Query. On this device, Media Query reports this area as being a hinge. I can hear you asking, Andre, how many types of display features are there? I'm glad you asked. Displays can currently have three types of features, hinge, fold, and cutout. Let's start with the cutout. It has been around for a long time. Your code already takes it into account by using safe area. The one in the middle is a fold display feature. In such cases, the device has one single display which is flexible enough to fold. The area where this happens is a display feature and it also provides information about the shape that the display makes. The one on the left is a hinge. It joins two displays to form one continuous screen area. Your application can render on this larger area with the hinge acting as a natural division for your layout. The shape the display makes is called the posture. If the device is sitting flat on a table, the posture is flat. When you are using it as a mini laptop or as a book, the posture is half opened. The code I'm showing you soon will make more sense now that you know what display features and what postures are. I will also show you a few new widgets that help your UI adapt to these new capabilities. But first, let's have a closer look at how this new data is structured. Media Query gets a new property, display features. The properties exposed by this class are bounds, type and state. The bounds is a rectangle 
marking the area on the screen where the display feature is located. The type is an enum and can have the values hinge, fold, or cutout. The state is the posture. It is also an enum and can be flat or have opened. Note that a device can have multiple display features at the same time. Samsung devices usually have a fold and a cutout at the same time, for example. This is why Media Query exposes a list of display features and not just one display feature property. Let's go back to the Surface Duo. You might wonder what your app looks like on this device. By default, apps open in single screen mode. Your app looks and behaves just as expected. There's no difference from a single screen phone. Apps can open side by side and you can use both at the same time. You can even define app groups, a shortcut that opens two apps together. For example, imagine calendar and email opening together when you want to plan your week. This means that your app might not be the only one visible when it's open. Your app can also be spanned across both screens. Using this gesture, you can span any app. If an app does not look good or behaves poorly when spanned, users can of course go back to one screen. We call apps that take advantage of this form factor enhanced. Please don't worry about your app not being enhanced yet. Users always have the option to unspan. When spanned, your app sees one single screen. This whole area is theoretically available for rendering. You do, however, know where the display features are. Your app knows there's something there. By using the display features API, you can offer users an enhanced experience. Here are some examples of enhanced apps. Outlook shows you a list of emails on one screen and the opened email on the other. Jira uses the whole available space to show you the sprint board. You can even drag and drop across displays. You don't need to do anything for that to work, by the way. The device drivers take care of everything. Touch gestures are seamlessly transferred from one screen to the other, and your app sees them as the same pointer. YouTube uses the posture property to make the video expand to the hinge. This way, the hinge becomes a logical separation point for the layout. So, what will your Flutter app do with the extra screen? Here are a few things that Flutter does for you already. Dialogues use the first screen to render. This way, your dialogues don't end up overlapping the hinge. First screen means different things in different cultures, so directionality is used to pick the screen. The example I'm showing is in English, so the left screen is chosen. You can, of course, specify where you want the dialogue to go. You can specify an anchor point, which you can view more like a target. Imagine you tap a button on one screen and you want the dialogue to show on the same screen. You can use the anchor point for that. Pop-ups, like context menus, also work out of the box. For example, in this case, the menu would have been rendered on the hinge area. Okay, I want to dive into building enhanced layouts with you, but before we do so, it's important to understand what these layouts look like. By this point, I think it's clear that enhancing your app requires thinking a bit differently about layout. I expect most people watching this are developers, so let me give you something to take back to your designer and product manager. This is our Figma design kit. It contains everything designers need to make their ideas come to life on foldables. This is our way of helping not just you, but your whole team. Oh, by the way, our help can extend even beyond this talk. If your team is considering enhancing your app for foldable and dual screen, we are open to collaborating directly with you. Please reach out to me after the talk if you're interested. Our research has surfaced five main design patterns you could use to enhance your app. Really, this part of the talk is for anyone on your team, not just the developers. I'll go through these design patterns one by one, starting with the one that your app is already using today. 
These design patterns are useful for scaling up your design, not just for adapting to dual screen. And this is why I'm going to show you how they work on a large screen as well, such as a desktop or tablet screen. Extended Canvas is useful for cases where the user can move the content and avoid the hinge area. Part of the content is hidden under the hinge. This is done so that the image is continuous. But the user can always zoom and move the content. This design pattern works best with maps, but can also be considered for image editing, painting, or other artistic apps, since the canvas can typically be moved around and zoomed into. The reason this is the design pattern that already works in your app today is that this is how maps behave out of the box. One thing you should keep in mind is that highlighting pins on the map and opening bottom sheets should avoid the hinge. The best experience for users is to center the pins on one screen instead of using the center of the map and bottom sheets open on the same screen as the selected pin, as opposed to opening it on the other screen. This can be achieved with the anchor point mentioned earlier if your bottom sheets are model routes. The large screen version of the extended canvas does not need any further explanation, but your bottom sheet implementation might need better logic so that it does not take over the whole width of the screen. List detail is, in my opinion, the most useful design pattern from this list. I have seen it deployed with great ease and success in many apps. One screen shows a list of items, the other renders the selected item in higher detail. A practical example of this would be an email client. You have the list of emails on one screen and the selected email opened on the other screen. Users already have a mental model for this type of layout, since desktop email clients typically use it already. One thing to consider when implementing this is, again, the placement of dialogues. If the dialog or bottom sheet is related to the list or the details screen, it should appear on the same screen. Another consideration is that your list also needs to be able to render a selection, something that until this point was not necessary. Most of what I'm showing you is part of our samples project, which I will link at the end of this talk. All these design patterns have concrete examples there that you can look at. When looking at this pattern on a large screen, the proportions between the two panes might make sense to be something other than 50-50. By this point, you might wonder how this complicates your app, but I have some good news. There is a new widget called 2Pane that does all these things for you already. It's just a matter of how you configure it. Before I show you the new widget, let's go through the rest of the design patterns. Two page is very simple to understand. At first glance, it simulates a book. Both screens show the same type of content. This design pattern can be used with any continuous stream of content. For example, you can view a photo album this way or multiple security cameras at the same time. Foldables have a lot more screen real estate and the two-page pattern simply shows more of the same thing on the second screen. When we look at the large screen version of this, we see that it remains exactly the same. Even the 50-50 split continues to make sense. Of course, if the space is not large enough, showing only one page is more appropriate. I mentioned the two pane widget earlier, it helps with this type of logic as well. Dual view is all about different perspectives. You look at the same information on both screens, but represented in two different ways. Here we are looking at restaurants. One screen shows a list while the other shows a map. Both screens show restaurants. They could just as well be hotels or anything else that has a physical location. The analogy I like to use here is 3D editing software. It's hard to navigate 3D environments on a screen. So what they typically do is show you the same scene viewed from different perspectives, top down, front, lateral, so that you can successfully align your items in the scene. Such a 3D editing software would benefit a lot from this layout and the extra space foldables offer. 
Here is another example. Both screens show markdown text. The left screen shows an editor, while the right screen shows the final render. If your app had to switch between editing and rendering something, this design pattern might be the easiest for you to pick up. When we look at this on a large screen, the only thing that might change is again the proportion between the two panes. Companion pane makes a lot of sense for supporting content, smart suggestions, or as with this example, previewing and modifying content at the same time. With image editing apps, users can preview their work on one screen and use the other screen for making changes. This gives your app a lot more space to work with. In this design pattern, you have the main screen where the user focuses their attention and the secondary screen which offers support. This becomes particularly interesting when the device is used in the half-open posture, making the bottom screen act more like a custom input device. You can recognize this as the design pattern that YouTube uses on the Galaxy Flip when the posture is half opened. In another example, the secondary screen could just offer extra information. You can even use it to offer tips or help. This is what the onboarding experience looks like on the Duo. You can see that the secondary screen is mostly used to support the main screen. This design pattern also makes a lot of sense on large screens, although again, the split between panes might make sense to be different. We're now moving away from design and more into Flutter code. I will link the design kit at the end of the talk, along with some other cool things. I already mentioned the two-pane widget. This is a new widget that helps with scaling up your layout. All three images below are rendered using the same piece of code. There are a few other cases not shown here that happen when you rotate the device, but all of them are handled by two pane. So the parameters used by it are pane one and pane two, which are the two children, pane priority, which can be both for showing both panes, or pane one or pane two if we want to render only one pane and not both, and pane proportion which is a double from 0 to 1 and represents how much space each pane takes. Two pane takes a few other parameters like direction or alignment, but I want to focus on just the priority and proportion for this talk. All these parameters are overridden when the device has a display feature like the hinge, so the parameters you give this widget are mostly for large screens. This way you can focus on what the app looks like on tablets and desktops and you don't have to worry about the dual screen devices in particular. All the images I've shown you are built with two pane. Let's look at the code I used. You will notice that most simply make sure the screen is large enough and some specify a custom proportion. Here is list detail to page dual view, and companion pane. On this last one, I also want to show you that rotating the device simply works without the hassle. Two pane is not a complex widget. You can easily replace it with a column or row, but because it also snaps into place on dual screen devices, it introduces spacing to avoid the hinge, and it adapts to device rotation we hope you will consider it useful and give it a try. Another widget I want to quickly mention is display feature subscreen. You will need this widget if you have custom model routes in your app. When you use show dialog, the framework automatically wraps your layout with this widget. If your dialogs are shown using other techniques, you might need to do the same manually. A simple way of looking at this is by comparing it to safe area. Safe area makes sure you don't overlap any media query padding. Display features subscreen makes sure you render using only one subscreen. Our plan is for everything that I've shown you in this talk to be part of the Flutter framework. We have opened a number of PRs, some of them are already merged, and some of them are still in review. If you are eager to use these features early, there is a custom Flutter fork 
that you can find in the link at the end of this talk. It's very easy to set up, it just takes a few git commands and we walk you through every step. On the other hand, Media Query, for example, is already part of Flutter Master, so you do have access to display features if you want to experiment with this today. All you have to do is use the master channel. Alright, since we have enough time, let's quickly enhance a notepad application that I have here ready. The code is organized in multiple steps, so we can quickly go through them. This is how the app looks like. It's a list of notes. You can open each note, you can edit the title and the description, and you can navigate through the application. All right, let's look at the code. So the building blocks are a note list that takes a on note selected parameter and a note editor widget, which takes a note index parameter. I won't go into much detail on how these are built. You can imagine, and I'm sure you can build them yourself as well. They are very typical Flutter code. All right, so what happens when we span the app? The app is not enhanced in any way. It doesn't know about the display features. And frankly, if you look at it, it's not a good UI to have on such a large screen anyway. A good enhancement for this would be to implement the list detail pattern. So I'm just gonna use two pane and give it a pane one as a note list and pane two as a note editor. This should make the list and the editor sit side by side. And it looks really good. But now if I unspan the app, 2pane still puts the list and the editor side by side. I don't really want this because this doesn't make any sense. So let's see what we can do about that. Perhaps we can use one of the parameters that 2pane has. So in the next step, we first want to make sure that the display has a hinge. We look at media query display features for this. And then we use that information to decide if we show both panes or just pane number one. Let's have a look and see how this looks. So it looks okay on one screen. And it looks okay when we span it across both screens. Let's try to open a note. As you can see, this doesn't look so good. The note spans across both screens when in fact I just wanted to change the selection on the second screen here. In this step, we make our main widget be stateful and we make it retain the selected index. We change the index when a note is selected and we give that index to the editor. So in other words, when we're using both screens, we no longer use the navigator. So let's see how that looks again. As you can see, the selection on the right hand side changes. And if we unspan the app and select a note, this continues to function properly. Let's span the app again. The next step is purely optional and it's something that I just simply want to do. I want to have an empty state on the right hand side rather than just showing the first item as being selected by default. To achieve this, I make selected index nullable so that if it's null, it just means nothing is selected. I don't know, it looks good. Let's move on to the next step. Now, the list doesn't show you what's selected. There's a ripple when I click on stuff, but I want it to stay selected. To achieve this, I need to let the list know what's selected. And for this, I give it a selected index parameter and this gets drilled down all the way to the item that's rendered on the list. If it's selected, then there's a blue tint. If it's not selected, then there's no background. Let's see how this looks. Okay, this starts to look more like an enhanced app. But there's one last thing that still doesn't work properly. If I navigate from the editor when I'm in single screen and then I span, I actually reach this weird state, which normally I shouldn't be able to reach, but I was able to do it because I can span and unspan the app. 
To fix this, I need to remove invalid navigation states. And this is a bit of a hack, I'll admit. I'm sure you can find better ways to deal with this in your architecture. But for this very simple app, I made a route that simply pops itself if it detects that it is on two screens. I call it single screen exclusive route. Let's have a look at the emulator one last time to validate that everything works correctly. And it seems to do. We have successfully enhanced our notepad application. I am reaching the end of this talk and I want to summarize what you should take home with you. First, please take the design ideas to your designer and PM. You can offer them the Figma design kit and see if they find it interesting. Second, all the emulator screenshots from this talk are from the Surface Duo emulator. It's free and we do our very best to make sure the experience is one-to-one -one with the real device. Where this emulator differs from the foldable emulators you find in Android Studio is that this one simulates the hinge area differently. The Android Studio emulators have continuous screens like the Samsung Galaxy Fold and Flip and the Surface Duo emulator has two separate screens like the real device. Normally the emulator is enough for your team to be effective. But if for some reason your app needs to be tested on real devices, please contact me and I will see what can be done to help you test. This is the link and QR code to everything I just mentioned. By the way, our team offers the same level of support for all other frameworks as well, including native Android, web, Xamarin, React Native, Unity, even Jetpack Compose. Our team is friendly on the internet and, among other things, hosts a Twitch show and also writes blog articles. If you want to be in the loop with our team, please follow us on Twitter. My call to action for you is to install the emulator today, give your app a run, and then let us know how it went. Thank you very much for paying attention, see you at the Q&A and on Twitter.